Hi students. In this session, we are going to uh, discuss two more properties of cosmic rays that we have to learn as a part of our syllabus. Uh, the first two we had discussed in our last video, that is um, latitude effect and altitude effect. That is how does the cosmic ray intensity vary with latitude and how does the cosmic ray intensity vary with altitude. Those were discussed in the last video. In this session, we are going to discuss the east-west effect and longitudinal effect. Now, what is east-west effect? It is found that at any azimuth, more particles arrive from the west than from the east. That is, uh, at any particular azimuth, we feel that more cosmic ray particles are detected to arrive uh, from the west to the east. Okay, this effect is found maximum at the equator, where about 14% more particles uh, appear to come from the west than from the east. This effect is called east-west effect. That is, cosmic rays are the particular azimuth. That is, cosmic ray particles are the east. It has been detected so. And this effect is called east-west effect. Now, uh, east-west effect can be interpreted in terms of the fact that majority of the cosmic ray particles are positively charged. And either, uh, you consider a positively charged particle coming vertically down towards the equator. Uh, now, it gets uh, deflected by the Earth's magnetic field. Uh, consider a particle coming vertically down towards the Earth's equator. It's get, it uh, should get deflected because of the Earth's magnetic field. And the direction of this deflection is given by Fleming's left-hand rule, where uh, the uh, middle finger points towards the direction of motion of the charged particle. The uh, forefinger, that is not, not very, the forefinger points towards the direction of magnetic field and the thumb points towards the direction of the magnetic force. Now, it is found that uh, when a positively charged particle comes down vertically towards the magnetic equator, it gets deflected by the Earth's magnetic field and by Fleming's left-hand rule, you can see that the particles are deflected towards the west, uh, towards the east. Sorry, not towards the west, towards the east. That means the particles are coming from the west and getting deflected towards the east. Mm. This uh, proves that, that is, uh, east-west symmetry proves that majority of our uh, cosmic ray particles are positively charged. If they were negatively charged, then the reverse would be the case. That is, if the cosmic ray particles were negatively charged, cosmic ray particles negatively charged, I don't know, angle, uh, these particles are not East till then the west till I keep it in the die. Pakshe, if the particles positively charged, I do go down. Other number west till then no east till I keep deflected. I will not die. Okay, so east west symmetry, which has been uh, which has been experimentally detected, proves the fact that majority of the uh, cosmic ray particles are positively charged. If the cosmic ray particles contain equal number of positive and negative charges uh, or negative particles, there would have been no east-west symmetry at all. Okay. So, from east-west symmetry, which has been proven experimentally, we see that majority of the primary cosmic ray particles must be positively charged. Now, the last effect that you have to learn is longitude effect. Here, the intensity of the cosmic ray uh, depends on the longitude of the point of observation. And this is called longitudinal effect. That is, the cosmic ray intensity, longitude and search vary. The uh, intensity of the cosmic rays vary with longitude. Okay. Uh, that is, see, the intensity of the cosmic rays along the equator. Equator corresponds to a constant latitude. A particular latitude is the latitude. Longitude varies in the intensity of the cosmic rays will vary. That is, if you take any 
particular latitude you find that the intensity of the cosmic rays varies with different longitude this is uh, because the earth's magnetic field is not symmetric about the axis that is the longitudinal effect arises because the earth's uh, magnetic field is not symmetric about the axis so this much about the two properties that is uh, uh, east west symmetry and or east west effect and uh, longitudinal effect next we come to uh, another topic uh, related to cosmic rays that is cosmic ray showers it's a very important topic that is cosmic ray showers so uh, what is meant by cosmic ray sh showers now when an ionization chamber that is a detector it is used to study cosmic ray intensities uh, is used it was found that occasionally the intensity of the cosmic rays rise, rises momentarily to several times its normal value nammal ionization chamber polathe detector upayogichu cosmic ray intensity measure cheyidappol ഒക്കേഷനലി ചില ചില സമയങ്ങളിൽ ഈ കോസ്മിക് റേസിന്റെ ഇന്റൻസിറ്റി വല്ലാതെ ഉയരുന്നതായി നോർമൽ വാല്യൂവിൽ നിന്ന് വല്ലാതെ ഉയരുന്നതായി കാണപ്പെട്ടു സോ ദ സയന്റിസ്റ്റ് വെൻ ബിഹൈൻഡ് ടു ഫൈൻഡ് ഔട്ട് വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദ റീസൺ ഫോർ ദി സഡൻ സ്പൈക്സ് ഓർ സഡൻ റൈസ് ഇൻ ദി ഇന്റൻസിറ്റി ഓഫ് ദി കോസ്മിക് റേസ് സോ ഇറ്റ് വാസ് റോസി who first investigated this phenomenon and rossi's results were explained by baba and heitler and independently by two other scientists carlson and oppenheimer and they gave the cascade theory of cosmic ray showers now what i'm going to explain here is the cascade theory of cosmic ray showers so what is cosmic ray showers the occasionally found sudden bursts of ionization or sudden rise in the intensity the momentary of the cosmic rays to several times its normal value is called cosmic ray showers chela pratheka samayangalil cosmic ray de intensity vallada uyarnu kanapadunu idineyana ee sudden burst of ionization സംഭവിച്ചിട്ടായിരിക്കും ഈ ഇന്റൻസിറ്റി കൂടുന്നത് ഇതിനെയാണ് കോസ്മിക് റേ ഷവർ എന്ന് പറയുന്നത് കോസ്മിക് റേ ഷവേഴ്സ് നൗ വാട്ട് ഇസ് ദി റീസൺ ഫോർ ദി കോസ്മിക് റേ ഷവേഴ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഇസ് ഗിവൺ ബൈ ദി കാസ്കേഡ് തിയറി ഓഫ് കോസ്മിക് റേ ഷവേഴ്സ് ദാറ്റ് വാട്ട് ഐ ഗോ ടു എക്സ്പ്ലെയിൻ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ടോൾഡ് ദാറ്റ് ദി കാസ് കോസ്മിക് റേ ഷവർ പ്രൊഡക്ഷൻ ഇൻവോൾവ്സ് ടു പ്രോസസ്സസ് രണ്ട് പ്രോസസ്സസ് അതിൽ ഇൻവോൾവ് ആണ് ഒന്ന് വൺ ഈസ് റേഡിയേറ്റീവ് collision that is collision takes place and radiation or photon is given out and the next one is pair production from this photon you have learned pair production in your fifth sem quantum mechanics so you might be knowing that how a gamma ray uh, forms an electron positron pair a gamma ray or a photon having energy greater than 1 mev forms an electron uh, positron pair um, in the presence of a heavy nucleus okay so uh, that is pair production so uh, the reason for cosmic ray showers is due to two processes one is radiative collision and the other one is pair production so let us see what is happening there consider an energetic electron or a positron let us initially consider an electron an energetic electron is coming uh, and it will encounter a heavy nucleus it will encounter a heavy nucleus or it will collide with the heavy, heavy nucleus and it will give out its energy and this energy appears in the form of a photon now uh, the photon will interact with the electric field of the atomic nucleus resulting in the production of an electron positron pair now we know that the energy required for pair production must be more than 1 mev the electron and positron so produced will have sufficient energy to uh, so that it will undergo uh, or it will uh, undergo further collisions with the nuclei and Uh, give out photons and those photons will again give rise to electron positron pairs see the this photon has given rise to an electron positron pair that electron will again give rise to 
the electron positron pairs the electrons will further collide with the nuclei give rise to electron positron pairs and this process will continue so uh, the process by which the photon is given out by an energetic electron is called radiative collision and that photon forming an elect uh, electron positron pair is called pair production this process will continue till the energy of the photon or energy of the electron goes below uh, 1 mev and pair production stops so the multiplication will continue until the in initial energy becomes divided between a large pair uh, and the energy of the particles falls below the critical energy of 1 mev required for air production to take place so uh, when the number of particles becomes very high suddenly then it results in uh, in the uh, cosmic ray showers so this is the reason for cosmic ray showers to take place i hope this is clear to you that is an energetic electron will come it will encounter a nucleus and it will give out its energy in the form of a photon this photon interacts with the electro, uh, electromagnetic field of the uh, nucleus and uh, or the electric field of the atomic nucleus and it will be uh, forming a uh, resulting in the formation of an electron uh, positron pair this electron and positron will <coughs> further collide with the nuclei giving off um, photons and those photons will again form electron positron pairs this process will continue until the energy of the uh, electron or positron give, goes below the critical energy of 1 mev so this process uh, takes place in between or occasionally in the cosmic rays and it is responsible for the cosmic ray showers or sudden bursts in the intensity of the cosmic rays so i hope cosmic ray showers is clear to all of you so in this uh, video we have discussed east west effect longitude effect and the cascade theory of cosmic ray showers i hope it is clear to all of you if you have any doubts please do contact thank you